Today we're going to be making samosas. They are a beautiful Indian snack dish and you can make them as spicy or as mild as you want. They've got a beautiful uh, pastry on the outside and potato, beautiful potato filling, you're gonna love it. And we're gonna make a yogurt raita that goes with it as like a little dipping sauce. All right, let's get cooking. Great. All right, so the first thing you'll need is some plain flour. So um, all we're doing here is just checking that you've got them. So plain flour, you'll need some water, You'll need some salt. You'll need some green bean, green peas. Just got some frozen peas. If you've got peas, carrot and corn, you could do that as well. You'll need some ginger. I've just got literally crushed ginger in the jar. Um, it says here hing or asafoetida. Don't worry about it. Put a line through that. Asafoetida is a, um, an Indian uh, it's like a spice and it settles stomach. It's like, um, yeah, it's very unusual and it smells really weird and that's why you only have a, a pinch of it, but we're not even going to worry about that. You'll need some lemon juice. you need some cumin or cumin seeds. Either one is fine. You'll need some chilli powder or chilli flakes is fine. You'll need some fennel. If you've got fennel seeds, that's fine. If you've got, if you manage to find fennel powder, awesome. I didn't, so fennel seeds. Some oil. See my oil is there. Now, ajwan. Ajwan is actually caraway seeds, but if you haven't got them, that's fine. We'll use some more of the fennel. We'll need some potatoes some more oil, some chilies if you're going to make your spicy, some coriander leaves, got some coriander already chopped up, some extra salt, garam masala, which is like a, um, another little spice, and some more cumin powder. Great. All right, that is a lot of, rest, lot of ingredients that we wouldn't normally have. And in terms of equipment, you will need chopping board and a knife. You'll need a mixing bowl. Just got my mixing bowl there. A wooden spoon. Measuring cups and measuring spoons. You'll need two saucepans. So you'll need a saucepan for your potatoes and either a frying pan or another saucepan. A rolling pin, it's my rolling pin. A baking tray with some baking paper, some pastry and a pastry brush. All right, fabulous. So the first, we're gonna do it in this order. We've got, we're gonna make our dough, then we're gonna make our filling and then if you want to um, wait to the end, we'll make some minted yogurt sauce or else I can just send you to a website to, to find that. That's nice and easy. But the first thing we need to do is get our potatoes cooking. Has anyone already cooked their potatoes? Great. All right. Fantastic. So. Oh, excellent. Yes, fantastic. All right. My potatoes are in the process of cooking. Excellent. So the first thing you want to do is cut your potatoes in half. You actually, unless you've got um, brushed potatoes that are dirty, you don't even need to peel them. You're going to chop them in half and pop them into um, a saucepan full of water. So I've got my potatoes. Oops, a daisy. I've chopped them in half and I'm just putting them on to boil. The skin will come off once you cook them. It will just be really super easy to peel. So chop your potatoes in half. Let me just grab some. I've just got Desiree potatoes here. Everything's gone missing. 
chopping my potato in half, popping it in a saucepan and bringing it to the boil. Great. Excellent. And then that will just, we'll just cool them down and we'll come to that at the end. So once you've got your potatoes cooked, sorry, once you've got your potatoes on the boil, just give me a thumbs up. Still doing that, Haley or Emily. So what we're going to do is add two cups of plain flour to our bowl. Two cups of plain flour. Make sure that you do them nice and um, level. You want your cup measure to be level. And um, I never measure over the bowl because if I measure over the bowl, the chances are that I will spill and I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I've put in, what I've put out. So every time I measure anything, whether it's a liquid measure, whether it's a cup measure, I always do it at the side and then I put it into the bowl. So I'm not trying to do it in the air and try to pour things in sort of midway. midway. I let my cup literally sit on the bench and make it nice and easy. So you'll often see in a recipe for the flour to be spooned and levelled and that's, that gives you the most accurate um, the most accurate measure. So you don't want to be squashing your flour down. You just want it placed in there and they'll say spoon. So you spoon your flour in, nice and level measure, and then pop that straight into your bowl. If you need to give it a quick tap to get it nice and settled. Don't put your flour away because you will be needing that. Excellent. Line out the way. <laughs> then you're going to add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Let's just make that one teaspoon. Let's not complicate our lives too much. One teaspoon of salt to your flour, one teaspoon of salt. Again, I don't measure over the bowl. It's just keeping my life nice and simple because you will see that I spill things and I drop things and I, <laughs> I make a mess. If you've got caraway seeds, if you've got caraway seeds, of which I do not, um, you can add them to the flour here. If you've got caraway seeds, which you, which is what ajwan is, do it. Otherwise, we just make a plain dough. Brilliant. And then you're going to add a quarter of a cup of ghee, a, so a quarter of a cup of oil quarter of a cup of oil to your flour. If you've got, um, if you've got ghee, great. I find ghee very difficult to um, locate. You can buy it at the, uh, the Indian stores or the Asian stores, but who's doing that at the moment? I'm just going to Woolies. Great. Making sure you pop all your lids on as you go. Okay. And then you can start mixing your dough around. Now, I haven't forgotten the water. We're going to get to the water, but we're not doing that yet. So we're going to start. I start with my wooden spoon. is that I want a little barrier between my hands and the mixture. So all I'm doing here is like I'm dusting my hands with a little bit of flour. So I'm just picking up a little pinch like that 
and just rubbing my hands with some flour. Great. Then we're going to start. So I'm using this sort of action. I'm starting to rub the oil into the flour. And you'll find that it will start to sort of clump together. This is good. Still doing that. Fantastic. I've just got a little cup of flour, which we will need later on. So I'm just putting that out of the way. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is it says six. I don't, know why, I don't know why I do that for six. It says six tablespoons. What we're going to do is just fill up a little half cup measure or a jug of water. Great. And then we're going to add four, that's where my four comes from. <laughs> four tablespoons of water until our mixture starts to come into a ball. So we don't want to have too much because otherwise you're, you're going to end up having to add more flour to it. So start. I'm using my spoon. Using my spoon to begin with, you will probably find that we'll need to get our hands in again. Bit of a messy one, back and forth washing your hands, but that's okay. All right, so I can tell that this is good. Everybody's dough is going to be different. Even though we've measured the same, it's just the way it goes. All right. So now I'm using one hand and I'm going to start squeezing my dough together. And ideally, your dough should come together in a ball. If it's still too dry, add it, um, add another tablespoon and then do it again. If it's still too dry, add another tablespoon. I can tell that I'm not happy with mine because I want, it says here, Dough has to be firm, stiff, and not sticky. So we want it to come together. <laughs> Fantastic. Excellent. All right, then. Now what we're going to do is just cover it with a tea towel and pop it to the side. And wash your hands again. So I'm using a strainer and I'm going to drain my potatoes. And I'm just, you can see how much steam's coming out of them. So I'm just going to let them um, sit for a while and then it will be super easy to peel them. Let's go down our list. All right, so you're going to need half a cup of peas, half a cup of peas ready to go there. Half a cup of peas. Actually, half a cup of peas. So sometimes I measure everything out just to make it nice and simple. You need half a cup of peas. You'll need a tablespoon of ginger. So if you need to, um, if you need to grate your ginger, do that. We're going to have half. Uh, we're going to use a tablespoon of ginger. So I'm just going to have that measured, ready to go. Tablespoon of ginger. Okay, 
you'll need a teaspoon of lemon juice. So if you want to cut up half your lemon, have that ready to go. You'll need three quarters of a teaspoon of cumin. Doesn't matter if it's cumin seeds or cumin powder, ground cumin. Three quarters of a teaspoon, you can use a teaspoon. This will just make it nice and easy when we go to fry that everything is already done. If you're using chili powder, you want three quarters of a teaspoon of chili powder. Again, you don't have to do that at all. If you don't use, if you don't, um, if you don't really enjoy spice in your family, you can make these samosas as hot or as mild as you want. So we've got a tablespoon of ginger. Got my ginger there. Tablespoon of ginger. You've got half of your lemon ready to go. You can squeeze that straight in. Three quarters of a teaspoon of cumin seeds or cumin powder. Three quarters of a teaspoon of chili powder or chili flakes, whatever you're going to use. Right. Half a teaspoon of fennel seeds. Half a teaspoon of fennel seeds. I actually want you to make that a whole teaspoon. A whole teaspoon of fennel seeds. Really hard to get mine out. A whole teaspoon of fennel seeds. If you've got fennel powder, fantastic. <laughs> Four tablespoons of fresh coriander, half a teaspoon of salt. No need to measure that out. You can easily do that. But you do want to get one teaspoon of garam masala. One teaspoon of garam masala. Where's my garam masala gone? There. One teaspoon. One teaspoon of garam masala. I'm just measuring it out. My measuring spoon is well used today. Excellent. I'm just, I'm going to peel some of my potatoes nice and quickly. They will come off super, super simple because once they're cooked, they peel super easily. And then you want to break your potatoes up. So we're just going back to um, step three originally, and that said on the first page, and that says cool the potatoes and crumble them. So they're not they're not mashed into a pulp. So you can use like a metal spoon if you want and just crumble them into kind of big chunky bits. We don't, so I'm just crumbling mine up. Depending on your potato is how easy that will happen. Not pureed, just broken down. Perfect. Great. Okay, I'm going to start now. 
So I've got my fry pan ready to go here. And I'm going to put it over a medium heat. A medium heat. We don't want it too hot. And we're going to start with frying all of our spices up. And we're adding one tablespoon of oil. One tablespoon of oil. So medium heat. And you'll need a wooden spoon or something, something to move everything around. I've got my handy dandy spatula. Remember, if you're using a non-stick pan, you need to use non-stick equipment, utensils. Great. And the first thing we're going to do is add our cumin seeds or your cumin powder, either one. And we'll work fairly quickly here. Don't get stressed. Just follow the recipe. I'm just going to yes. incorporate cumin seeds. And the recipe says... As soon as your seeds start to sputter, spatter, splutter, you don't want them to be burnt. You just want them to be roasted. And then you're going to add your ginger and your chilies. So if you like Bethany and you put everything in together, that's not a drama at all. And you'll suddenly start to smell your spices roasting. You can see the smoke coming off from mine. As soon as your seeds start to sputter, if you're using powder, they won't sputter as much, but you'll, they'll start to, you'll, you'll be able to smell the change in the spice. It will get roasted and then you can add your, whoa, here we go, here we go. Ginger. Then add everything else. The baby is going to go down. So you're adding your chilli, your garam masala, your fennel, and then once that's done, you don't want it burning, add your peas. Oh, smells amazing. Wow. And then we want to add half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of salt. <laughs> I think I'm killing my family. <laughs> you want to open that back door? <laughs> And then as soon as your, <laughs> I'm getting a bit of pushback from my family here, then you can add your potatoes. Oh, wow. Add your potatoes. Add your potatoes and then we're going to add our lemon in a minute and our coriander. Oh, yum. <laughs> Robin, how are you going? <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're stirring everything around. 
There's a lot happening there and then it's done. You can just add, like Bethany did, just add everything together. But don't forget your salt. Add your salt, half a teaspoon of salt. And then all I'm doing here is just making sure everything is incorporated. I'm going to turn it down a little bit now. It doesn't need to be fried up. Whoa. <laughs> and then we're going to add our coriander, coriander leaves. And a teaspoon of lemon juice or half a lemon half a lemon just squeeze it in so i making it nice and simple i just do it over my hand like jamie oliver even my husband does it like this now squeezing it through i catch the seeds again one less thing to wash up great beautiful And then just mix that through. Oh my gosh, so much flavor, guys. How fun. Ooh, yum. <laughs> wow. Remember, turn your pan right down once you add your potatoes. Turn your pan right down. So cool. Yum. Potatoes, lemon, flavors. Coriander. Oh, I am one happy girl. <laughs> I think the rest of my family may not be as much with all the spice. <laughs> I think my husband's trying to leave home now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Right. That's my husband having a coughing fit or pretending to. Excellent. All right, so I've turned it right down to a really low heat. In fact, you can then turn it off. Turn it off once you're done. Whew. Turn it off. But what you do need to do now is I want you to taste, taste it. So grab yourself a, a, um, a teaspoon and taste and see if you've got enough salt in your mixture. <laughs> There's a lot of lead up to that and then it sort of suddenly comes together. Taste and see if you're happy with that. If you've got someone in your family that wants to have a taste test, give them a taste test, see if you've got enough salt. Potato loves salt. So we bring that out, Jess. All right, let's move on to our dough. And you'll find that your dough, like any dough, when we rest it, it's slightly softer than it was. So make sure that you've sprinkled your board with some flour. Where am I at? What did I just say before? The oil, done that, done that. All right. So we're going to just knead our just knead our dough for a minute. It says three to four minutes. Don't worry about that. We're just going to do it for a minute. So it should be nice and pliable, not too soft. All right, that's a minute in my books. All right, fantastic. Then what we're going to do is. Grab a knife or a pastry cutter. And we want to divide our dough into five portions. Right. Um, five is never even even, so just do it in five portions that are roughly even. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five. Great. Okay. 
All right. Now the recipe says to um, oil your board. I've found that it works with the flour, but let's just see how we go. All right, so now, I don't know about yours, I'm just using one little piece of dough now, and I can definitely feel it um, sort of greasy. Anyone else, it's a little bit greasy? Yep. All right. Okay, so the trick now is um, rolling out rolling out your dough but what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to do it into an oval so rolling turning rolling turning Yes, so I've got the shape of Australia going really well here. <laughs> and don't stress, don't stress. It's all about having a go here. And the beautiful thing about pastry is that you can chop it and add it. So if yours ends up becoming a little bit like, I don't even know what country this looks like, wanting to do I'll just see if this works with my and I'm going to make into a cone I'm gonna chop it in half for Daisy And so what we're wanting to, <laughs> my great creative skills here. So I've cut it in half and I'm wanting to roll it into like a cone. Sort of roll it into a cone like that. So you might need to take a couple of goes to do this. So I'm, I've got it like this. And I find that if I put it in my hand, oh no. So it's almost like I'm using that centre part there as the, as the point. And then I'm going to have it like this. Great. Fantastic. Now, before you do anything else, what you will need is a tray with some baking paper. Tray with some baking paper. And then you'll need your potatoes. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see everything. Now, it's all about trial and error for this. So I've got my cute little cone. And I, on the back of it, I've just sealed it with a little bit of, like literally I dipped my finger in the water, the way, dipped my finger in the water and sealed it. And I used the inside of my hand. And you can see I've got a little flappy bit. And the flappy bit, I'm sure that's a culinary term, the flappy bit is going to be the base. Right. So I'm going to fill it with some of my filling. Oh my goodness gracious, that's not a good idea. I'll put it all over the floor. Right. So you can sort of see how that's looking, that's behind the light. Mm. 
and then seal it up. You might need to do it a few times before you sort of get the right little shape. I feel like it's something from Harry Potter. <laughs> All right, fantastic. And then you've got that little guy there. And you can bake these guys or you can um, fry them. So depending on what you do in your family. So I'm going to wet that before I even roll it so that it's nice and ready to go. And then I'm rolling it. Perfect. And you want to be able to make sure that the bottom bit, the witch's hat bit or the ice cream cone, whatever you want to call it, is sealed. Otherwise, your filling is going to come out during cooking. And then I'm pushing my filling all the way down. It's very tactile. Putting it all the way down. But not overfilling it so it's going to because you've got to be able to seal it up with this little flappy bit. Now my first one was much better than my second one. But you've kind of got that little, it's like a little almost upside down pyramid. So I've got the seam running down the side and I'm nervous that I didn't put filling at the end. But in the deep fryer. Okay, let's just read this. <coughs> Frying the samosa, heat a pan, deep fry. The oil should not be hot or smoky. Uh, gently the slide in one at a time. Okay, you're going to have to test that out for yourself. Remember, they're already cooked, so all you're really doing is heating it through and frying the outside. So I suggest if you've got them on a medium heat, They'll probably be done in about three to four minutes. But that's going to depend on the size of your samosas. What you want to do is um, check, check. So do one. Do one as your test one. If you've got a really dodgy one, use that one. Do that one, test it, and then that can be the determiner of how long you do it for. So you don't want it under cooked. You want that nice, lovely sort of golden and what will happen is that there'll be like little cute little bubbles that will happen on the um, on the end of them. Have you got a deep fryer or an air fryer, Jess? I can do that without looking like a lunatic. All right, so I've just got some mint that I've picked out of my bush and it's from my little shrub tree and I've washed it and I'm just picking off the mint. You can do it with coriander if you wanted to. If you've got some extra coriander, it will have a little bit of a different taste, but it'll still be nice and refreshing. And then I'm going to chop up my mint really finely. It's called chiffonaise, which is chopping up, rolling it up, and then very finely chopping up take your time to do it very finely so that no one's going to take a big long piece of mint out of their mouth when they if you want to put this through like a little um food processor to make make it even more fine you can you can as well this is kind of like a more of a rustic organic type of sauce, popping it into my bowl, some mint. If you want to do chilli, chop up the chilli. We've got half a lemon, half a lemon or half a lime if you've got lime, half a lemon, half a lime. 
There's no right or wrong way with this recipe. It's just you vibing, <laughs> you vibing how it tastes. I've got a teaspoon of cumin. I'm actually going to use half a teaspoon because I think that's a bit too. This is quite a traditional um, Indian kind of flavour. If you want to put some salt, half a teaspoon of salt. You can do some mustard. That's traditionally part of it. I'm not going to use mustard. I'll put it in the chat in a minute. We made yogurt last night in our dessert class, which is fun. Now I've got some beautiful natural tart yogurt and 200 grams, so about a cup, a cup of yogurt. Need another spoon. Oh, yum. I mix things up, put them in the sink, and then I forget them. Again, if you want to make your mint even more finer, you can put it through the food processor or a little stick blender. Don't do it for very long because you don't want um, your yogurt to go. But it will go a nice minty sort of colour. And then taste it and see. Yum, yum. Probably a bit more lemon. Yum. So we've got lemon, salt, cumin, some chilli if you want it. All right. <laughs> I would love to see photos of your amazing samosas. It's a fairly epic recipe and um, you're amazing. You've done it. You've made the pastry, made the filling. <laughs> and really, once we get into it, you know, once you add that beautiful potato, it's done. Like it's just a lot of prep and then we get into it. So, um, and then, of course, we've got our beautiful yogurt sauce or the mint dipping sauce, which will be beautiful. You can give everyone a little... Um, bowl of sauce and sprinkle it across the top. Fantastic. Jess, I'd love to find out how your deep fried ones go. Beautiful. So again, do one, test it out, and then that will make it really easy for the rest of them. If you've got a dodgy looking one, do that one first.